Hello, everyone. Today we are going to uh, go through the Signavio process intelligence uh, ETL and widget creation. Also, we look into how the ETL progresses through to various steps from data extraction to transformation and load to process and how in a Signavio PI process we create investigations and widgets to get insight from the process that we are going to investigate. Once we log into Signavio suit, we come at the collaboration hub homepage, which looks like this. There will be different diagrams for different workspaces, but this is how generally it looks. In the collaboration hub homepage, we need to go to the top right edge and click on your username and select process intelligence. Once we select process intelligence, we will be navigated to another page which will have the list of uh, all the processes, PI processes which have already been developed and they have the data in them. They might not even have data, but the process which are there, they will be listed as shown. As we will look at the ETL part first, we need to click on this button which says manage data. Now we will come across the key components of the ETL, which is data models, integration and data source. We will click on data source because that is the first component that we start from while developing an ETL. So we can see there are two data sources over here which are already developed. However, I will show you how to create one data source. Data source is a component of the ETL using which you connect to the source system from which you are fetching the process data. And it has a range of connectors to connect to various source system. When we click on create, we will be shown the available connectors that we have to access a source system. We have SAP application connector which can connect to SAP ECC, S4 HANA, SAP Success Factor, ServiceNow, Jira software, we have cloud storage and warehouse connectors like AWS Athena, AWS S3, Snowflake, Google BigQuery. There are database connectors like SAP HANA, MySQL, Postgres. And there are other specific connectors like manual upload, wherein you load the file directly from, from your local machine. Elastic open data connectors, ingestion API, when you have to load the data through APIs, and Microsoft SQL Server. In this case, we will use the enterprise system connector SAP, which is used to connect to SAP ECC and S4 HANA systems. However, for it to be able to connect to your system, you need to make sure that you have opened the port for the access to the Signavio PI application. Now we click on create and we will have all the options that are required to connect to a SAP ERP system like username, password, host name, system number, client. In the table list, we can connect. Um, sorry, we can include the tables which are required to. Be extracted from the source system and we will be able to extract only those specific tables once we move ahead, move ahead, move ahead in the other steps uh, of the ETL components. So we can add tables like BSEG, DKPF and so on and so forth. There is also an option to specify extra connection arguments wherein we need to specify any functions in the connections or any specific arguments which you require to make the connections or limit certain attributes of the connections. And once these all details are specified, we can click on save and the connection will be ready. I'm going to discard this connection because it is of no use to me, so I'll delete it. But we can see a readily made connection which is over here. Just let it get deleted. Yeah, so we can see a readily made connection over here, which is for SAP S4 HANA and SAP ECC demo. In our case, SAP ECC demo is our key area of interest, so we'll click on that. And we will see that we have specified the username, password, host name, system number, client and we have specified all the tables that we intend to extract from this system and the extra connection argument we don't have any specific for the systems so we have kept it empty 
in here we have specified tables related to purchase to pay process and we can see KKO, EKPO, BSEC, BKPF, CDHDR, CDPOS and other relevant tables. These are all the attribute table which does not store transaction data, but they store uh, dimensional data. After doing this, once we save the content, we'll get a valid sign over here which says that the connection is valid. Now this connection is OK for use and it is ready to be used for the further steps. The next step is integration. In integration, what we do is we create a we create a, a, a connection to the data source which will fetch all the tables from the data source and uh, if, and fetch their data as well along with it. So let's say we create a new integration. Here we will select the enterprise system as SAP because we have SAP source system already defined in one in the two data sources. We can select any one of the data sources like SAP S4 HANA demo or SAP ECC demo, but we'll select ECC over here as that's a, our area of interest. Now we can select the tables that we would like to extract from the data source. We can select tables like um, BKPF, BSEG, CDSDR, and these are the tables that we have listed in the data source as I shown you before. So we'll select one of those table. I select a small table so we can easily extract it. So we click on next. And there are two options over here while selecting a table. You can select a standard mode or you can select an advanced mode. Standard mode allows you to select the columns and the primary keys and extract the data. Advanced mode allows you to perform a bit of the SQL script options on the table. If you want to join it with another table and extract the data, you can do that through advanced mode. I'll select standard mode over here and click next. We'll get the list of the columns that we need to select from. I will not select all the columns because I'm more concerned about selecting specific columns only and I and leaving other columns as they are as we are not going to extract them. So this will limit the amount of data that we are going to fetch from the source system and avoiding any additional extraction. The next step takes you to the selection of the primary key columns. So I will select mandate and LIFNR over here. These are the key columns. Now our table is added in the integration. Now if, if we click on the three dots, we can do a configure. So we can configure this table for extraction. We can select the partition by specifying a date time column or a static value, a column which will have a numer uh, non numerical values or numerical values, but not date values. Um, and based on that, the partition of this table will be specified and it will be extracted based on the partition. We can add a delta criteria. We can also specify an SQL filter by specifying any column for which you need to apply a filter condition. Let's say date column or a department column or a company code column or any region or any year that you need to specify. You can specify it over here. We can also update the table after it has been added. So we can select additional column. Let's say I need to add name to column. I can select that and go to the next option and I can update the primary key if required and update the table. Once done, we can we'll have two options to extract the table. If we add multiple tables, we can extract them all together by clicking on the extract button or else we can click on these three dots next at the end of right end of the table name and we can click on extract. So this will start the extraction of the individual table. In the logs, we will see that the extraction of the table is in progress. We'll see the start date, create who has started the extraction, execution ID, end date, progress. We can click on refresh to see how the extraction is going. So this yellow sign signifies that extraction is in progress. Then we can click on schedule and we have the option to activate it. So if we activate a schedule, we can we can schedule the extraction of tables on a specific day. Let's say once a day. Hourly, weekly, monthly, every weekday at a specific time, and we can see the overview of the extraction over here. I would keep this 
inactive because we don't need to do a full ex, uh, regular extract as we are doing a full extract and this is for test purpose. We are not going to use it, but you can use it when you are doing delta extract and you have delta criteria specified. Now I can see that the extraction is done. We can see the progress mentioned over here. It is 2.29 K rows extracted in 53 seconds. So you can get the end time and the number of rows extracted as well. You can click on it and you can see the actual further details, which tells you how much time it has taken. You can I would also like to show you how you add a table in advanced mode. So let's say I click on BSEC, I click on next, I click on advance. Click on next. You will get a query by default for the BSEC table because this is out of the box and you will see that it is fetching data from. Based upon a joint condition of BKPF. So we will we it, it is joined to BKPF and we will be able to fetch the data from BSEC based upon the BKPF and uh, its date column because BSEC does not have a date column. So we will rely on the date columns of BKPF. And we have other partitioning being done. Date range provided over here, which could be used for extraction. I'll discard the changes over here and I'll go back to a well built and fully completed integration to show you how it would look. So I'll delete this one as it is of no use. I'll go to an integration which is already developed. I click on edit and we'll see all the list of tables added over here. So once you one, once a table is added, you can also see the columns of those tables by maximizing it, its uh, it, it name in the list. And we can see the column added, the key columns, the data type of the columns. If there is any specific customization for that column, we can click on edit column and we can pseudonymize it. So pseudonymize allows you to uh, encrypt a column value. Suppose it is a very confidential data, then and we can pseudonymize it. So you won't be able to see the actual values in the investigations or that we start in the process. And you can specify the description for that column as well. And you can remove a column if you want to from here. Otherwise, you can go to the manage table option and do the changes as required, but you have a easier option as well. And in some tables, we can specify the filter condition as well as mentioned over here. KYRT is equal to K. So this will limit all the records which have this uh, conditions being specified uh, satisfied and rest of the records will not be extracted. So we can obviously limit the amount of columns and the records that are extracted from a table. So that is very important from a business perspective because they don't want to put any additional data into the Signavio system. Now we can also check how a partition bin is been done. We can specify the partition over here as in this case for the CD post table, the partition is specified on object class and values are mentioned over here. This is a static value partition because these are all non date values and we can see that the partition was being done for them. And how the extraction was done before those each partition. We have not specified filter condition over here. There are other filter condition as well. If you look at this table, we can specify the filter multiple filter condition as well. If we want specific table related data and language related data, we can specify that as well. And if you look at the logs for this, you can see that. All the tables were extracted together. So we clicked on the big extract button uh, rather than individually extracting the tables and we extracted all the tables to get together. You can see the filter conditions over here. The time taken, the message, all details are already there. The CDPOS POS we are unable to extract, so we extracted separately, but you can see how each partition has been extracted separately for that table with this condition. Now, once our integration is already done, we move on to our last set of ETL, which we call data models.
So a data model is the place where the actual transformation takes place. In the data model, we loop in the integration and the data source for a specific system and then we perform transformation on it. So when we click on create data model, we'll get the range of systems that we need to perform the data, create the data model on. So we can select SAP in this case as we are working on SAP ECC system. We click create and we'll get a host of templates that we can create the data model on. So we'll have predefined transformation scripts that we get to create the data model. And those scripts can be used for the transformation. So we don't need to do any development for it. Provided we have all the tables, all the out of the box tables and columns, we we could easily perform the transaction transformation without any issues. So we have invoice to cash, invoice to pay, order to cash, operate to maintain, procure to pay, invoice to cash for SAP S4 HANA, same set of uh, process for S4 HANA and ISU process as well, meter to cash. We can create a blank template as well if we want. If the, all the tables are custom, we can create a blank template. But in this case, we are going to select procure to pay SAP CC and click on next. Now we can select the integration that we are going to use. As we have seen before, SAP ECC demo is our integration that we plan to use. We will select that and we click on create. So here what we'll get is we'll get our data source integration and our data model transformation all linked together ready for data extraction. But before that, what we need to do is we need to select a process to which this um, entire data ETL will load the data into. So we can select an existing process, one of those or we can cre create a new process and um, name it in a way that as per your requirement as in any let's say test process and we can click create and it will get an option that the process merge strategy will be automatically set to replace all as in all the data that will be loaded uh, for every etl extraction will replace the data loaded previously i'm not going to add the process over here because this is a test uh, data model so I'll just show you how it looks and you can have individual views like in you can just see the data source involved. You can see the integration involved. You can see the transformation involved. You can also see the schedule involved and each transformation will show you the different. Business objects involved in the P2P process as in contract, purchase acquisition, purchase order, good receive, FI invoice and each business object will have its own uh, set of event collectors as in event collection for contract creation event, contract change event, PR change creation event, PR change event, PO creation event, PO sending events and so on and so forth. There will also be script for uh, attribute collection which are not mentioned over here, but we will we can look into once we go into the business object. There is an option to schedule the ETL so we can activate this. We can schedule it like daily, weekly, hourly or monthly. We can specify the time at which it starts. We can see the status progress, everything. But I'm not going to use this as it is our test uh, data model. I'll just show you the overview. So we can click on the uh, each business object from here and look at their script. So this is the case attribute script. Attribute scripts are nothing but they have the case ID and the relevant attribute for the specific business object and each business object can be viewed from here. You can preview the data of the business object by clicking on preview. And you can search for any specific column in the script to understand whether where, whether that column is being used or not column uh, table or any condition whatsoever it is. You can see how the data looks in the preview mode. You can verify the script execution and see if there are any syntax error or any data correct calculation or processing errors in that. And uh, this is how your event log, uh, sorry, the attribute log would look. It will have the case ID and all the relevant attributes for the spe specific business object. Like say for contract, we have contract ID, contract company code, contract company text, contract purchase organization, contract purchase group, contract valid start date, end date, so on and so forth. You will also have some numerical values because those will be used for calculations and generating KPIs and which uh, and metrics. Now I'll dismiss this preview and I'll also show you that we have some shortcuts to go through the SQL script to navigate and perform some selection and delete options. 
then we can also look at the event collector scripts. Event collector scripts are, are similar to attribute log, but they don't have many attributes. They have specific columns related to the case ID, time and event. These three are the main columns that define the event log. You will you can click on preview data to see how it would look. Let's see how this runs and we can understand how it looks. So we have got an error over here, so we can also look at the error in case our script is having some issues. So when we click on more, we can see that syntax error column CDPS value old cannot be resolved. So we are missing the CDPS value old column over here. So what I'll do is in this case, I've not fetched this column, so I will just comment it. And mention null as value old. OK, and then I'll run this PV data to see if it runs or not. I expect it to run without any issues as I've selected. Yeah, so now you can see how our event log looks. Case ID, case time, case event name, event created by user ID, event created by user type. So that though these are the limited columns for an event log, which are selected by the out of the box transformation script. And these scripts can all be modified based on your requirement. If you have a custom table to be included, if you have something to be excluded, you can remove it from from this script and you can modify it as modify them as per your requirement and use them. You can disable the entire business object if it is not involved. Let's say you are generating contract from a, from a other system. You can disable this entire business object. So none of the script for from this business object will be executed. You can enable this and you can also disable any specific event related script or attribute related script as per your requirements. If you just want data coming from contract changes, you can just keep, keep it enabled and the rest you can disable it. Over here you can see all the. Tables and columns that you have access to and you can search for the columns that you have and you can maximize it to see how the data looks. This would take some time. That's why I'll not maximize it. So you can say B B U K R S is added over here. I'm sorry, this is not for maximization, maximizing them, but uh, this is for adding them into the script. OK. So this is all about the transformation script and similar script will be available for other business objects like purchase equation. You will have attribute script, event, event creation script. You can add your own event creation script if you require, you know. And you can update them. You can add new events if they are taking place in your system because of some customization or specific system involved or process steps involved. You can do that. And similarly, you will have scripts for all purchase order, all uh, key events of a P2P process. Now, all of these business objects, their data converge when you click on run it, run ETL or run TNL. I'll show it in a already built. Data model which is over here, so this is connected to a process unlike the previous one which we were just showing for for presentation only. This one. Once it is ready, what you can do is you can click on ETA, click on run ETL, but this will run extract transformation and load. However, we have already the data extracted so we can do run transform and load. So we don't do the extraction over here. When we click on it, we can see the pipeline logs. When we see the logs, we can see the transformation and load, how it is going and how much it is loading. So here the transformation and load is completed. So we can see the logs for uh, case attributes, the attribute scripts, and for the event collector transformation, the event scripts for each business objects. All the event scripts data is been merged into a single um, data set which you call an event log. And all the case attribute scripts out, output is merged into a single data set which you call as an attribute log. And all of this is merged based upon the case ID value and loaded into the process that is specified that we just saw. So here you can see the business objects, number of events, event collectors, start time, end time, duration of all the execution of the scripts from various business objects. Same for the case attributes. 
this merged the merge data from both of this uh, data, data sets is being sent to the process which is mentioned over here we can also include new data source and integration over here if we wish to extract data from multiple system so if we have data source data coming from amazon or uh, ms sql server or uh, any other sap success factor system then we can click on add data source and integration we can select that let's say service now jira software then we can um, select the existing data source and integration and then we can link it to our transformation and it would be also merged with the um, uh, business objects and uh, we can then load it into the process we can also add new business objects for the new systems that we are going to add from the transformation option we can click on new business object and we can just specify the name add and save and we will have our business objects created we can delete business object when you require but i would not recommend this because we might lose some rare the out of the box scripts which are already there although we might not be using it in case you don't want to use a business object you can just disable it So this is all about ETL. So once the ETL is done, our major part of the process mining is completed. Now we go to the most key area of process mining, that is the investigation. So you can click on this process and you can see, you can, you can see that the process investigation is already there. You can click on process setting over here to see the ETL being linked and the ETL log, which says the data was loaded at specific time, and then we can view the imported data as well. So you can see the case ID, activity, and timestamp, all the attributes related to the process from which are coming from the attribute logs, and the event log, event attributes as well, which are coming from the event logs. So these all data sets are merged together and loaded as a single data set into the process. And this data set now is ready for investigation and analysis as this is a test data set we'll go to a already built process which we are using for um, our uh, demo and that is called purchase to pay i've named it as purchase to pay and it has some decent data for investigation so when you click on purchase to pay you will also you will find the investigations that are available over here you can create new investigation you can import investigation from another process where you already created investigation and you can also add certain other attributes over here. Let's say we can add metrics. Here we can see we have already added metrics. I'll show you how to add a metric. We can click on new metric. We can click a create a custom metric, upload a metric, or add a metric from metric library. We can select the metric based upon a case or event aggregation type. We can select it based upon a process. We can select it based upon the objective of the analysis, dropout, cycle time, conformance. So there are a host of metrics that are available over here. So we can select any of them. So let's say we select um, average invoice payment time. We select it. We need to specify it invoice receipt event. So we need to specify the events over here. What is the invoice clearing event? So let's say we specify clear invoice and we specified invoice receipt events. Let's say create FI invoice item. We I'll look for the right value over here. So I'll, I'll get back to it, but we can specify the e event names over here and we will be able to see the value specified in this metric. So let me just go back to the investigation and I can show you that there is before I get back to the investigation I can show you the custom attributes that we can add these attributes are related to duration and event count so let's say we can specify event what is the first event first occurrence of let's say scan invoice and the last and event is last event is let's say book invoice we can we can say time from scan to book invoice you can save it 
so now this custom attribute is created. We can use it in the investigation. So now we have the event names over here. We can go back to the metric and add update those event name. And we can specify this as let's say. Scan invoice. Book invoice. I'm I need to check why these events are not coming up, but we we'll look at them at a later point of time. And as I as I've said in custom attributes, you can specify the first and last occurrence. Let's say you are looking for first and last occurrence of a particular uh, event. You can specify that and you also have insight where you can add new insights related to the investigation. So let me go to the investigation and show you how the investigation looks. So we'll go to the investigation. And we can see the first part in the investigation would be the process discovery, which will show you a spaghetti diagram. To see how. Um, how a di how a process actually looks. This is based upon the data that is mined from the system, so will it won't be matching to your defined process. There will be definitely some outliers and some different process being steps being taken, some step being missed. So all of these th things takes place and. Um, based on that you can um, create uh, you can navigate and understand the actual process how it looks. There are some KPIs that you generate in the process. There are some key KPIs you can generate. We we, we generate them through uh, a, a widget which we call as a value widget. And it is a simple calculation. As you can see over here, we count the number of cases and then we specify how much the cases are. We count the average cycle time. We count the number of variants, PO value. And in any value widget, you will also have the option to select the attribute or a metric that you have defined. So here we have defined the average invoice payment time, but This is not properly defined, so it is not coming up for us, but you can always select other metrics like this one. So we'll get the value average time for purchase order to delivery. Percentage of cases affected by work. You can specify all of those and you can see the values being generated. So you can spe select the metrics and generate the values. You can also use signal code where you can define. Uh, you can use complex signal uh, queries to generate the value that you are looking for. And you can put a where condition where you can count the cases and specify where event name is equal to let's say book invoice. Let me flatten this so we will get our values. 296. So 296 cases have book invoice. We can have other sort of widget which 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 tells you the distribution of the cases by a particular requester. Let's see here. How what are the requesters and what are the number of cases by them? We can see the number of cases by vendor, so we can do that distribution by by creating a value widget and then just clicking on this plus button and we can say breakdown by variant or a view over time, but you will get other attributes. If you have more attributes added, you can do a breakdown and create new widgets, which will give you the distribution of those that particular metric by different attributes. So here we are. We can see distribution by requester, by vendor, average purchase order or uh, order to delivery time. So we can see how over time this is an overtime widget, which tells you how the but, but specific cycle time varies over over a period of months. So to see over time, what you need to do is click on this plus for average cycle distribution and click view over time. So we will see how over time this is progressing. As we don't have complete data, this won't look clear. But if we minimize, then we can still see how this thing looks. So you also have this. What do we call as the specific sections in your investigation investigation, which you call chapters and each step chapter can be specific to 
specific to a particular topic. Let's say how are my how are the important KPIs looking? What is the cycle time overall and between intermediate process that we can calculate the cycle time between uh, for the entire process uh, for completed cases or between the intermediate cases of the process? Invoice paid without scanning, create PO to send, send PO to GR, GR to scan invoice, scan invoice to book invoice. And we can also see how the distribution of average cycle time looks, how average cycle time over, over time is. So this specific chapter is for cycle time where we can see all the cycle time related attributes. And we can provide a summary over here to specify what are the key metrics saying. So we will have a readout of those in case we need to present it to someone. And you can also add new widgets like over here in each chap chapter. You can add a value widget. You can have, add a breakdown distribution widget, overtime widget, different type of widget. You which are specific to KPIs and their distribution, and then there are other process related widgets which are for conformance and variant explorer, process discovery diagram, and table related widgets as well. And we can include activity list as well. So there are several widgets that can be added. Then we can see all the other chapters how they look. Let's see in here we are looking at the finance. How who is my top PO value uh, vendor by PO value? Who is my top requester by PO value? How good is the process conformance? You can see how your individual variants are going through the different process steps. So you can link a data model to this process and then you can see how your process is aligning with your actual data model. So different variant of processes you might see they are not properly aligning. So you have additional step or some steps being missed like this. So you can see some steps are being missed right from the start. It directly goes to scan invoice. So this is something that seems like a maverick buying. New steps coming over so you can see the process conformance over here and you can identify the happy path. Likewise, you have this another widget for throughput where you can see how your process goes through different steps and what is the count of uh, those individual cases that are going through that steps. You can increase the number of variants to understand what are the variations. You can see two processes are going from here. One is coming out here and one is starting from scan invoice. Two, 22 are starting from scan invoice. So there you will see all the variants coming out to understand if there are any outliers. Then we go to a very key component of or key widget of the investigation, which is known as a variant explorer. So variant explorer is used to find the happy path. You can select and deselect variants and understand how your variant explorer looks and um, what is the path followed by them. So in this case, let's say if I select the first area and you will see how the path for it is specified. You can select another variant, let's say number two, and you can see any new path coming up. You can then click on this pen icon and you can see the path of a particular variant. You can click for number two and you will see the path followed by it. So I'd select one, two and seven. Let's say to understand that this is my happy path or this is my set of process that actually should be followed. Once you have this, you can also see the values a variance based upon, you know, cycle time. You can see the values based upon metrics. But here we are not having in. Let's say we select any other metric and we can say see that we can see a variant based upon the first uh, number of cases as well. So we'll select this and I'll select the variant which are previously selected. And then I will click on generate BPN. So when I click on generate BPN, a process model based upon the variant selected will be created. And this process model will tell you that this is your to can tell you that this is what your to be process should be like. So this is uh, based off a blueprint for your to be process and then you can modify it. You can add swim lanes. You can add uh, data objects. You can add artifacts, start events. And uh, you can then uh, add uh, dictionary items to it. All sort of uh, additions can be done and this can be saved. And published saved in collaboration hub. Uh, sorry, a uh, process manager uh, where it will be saved in a folder structure and then it can be published from from there uh, with your team members to understand that this is the 
possible to be processed and it can be further modified and changed to get to the final to be processed. So this is how you go from data extraction from the source. Transformation, loading it into the process, generating investigation insights and then coming to a. To be processed. This also includes comparing your investigations with the existing as is process and then coming to the to be process. So this is the entire cycle of process transformation that we can. Experience uh, through the Signa API ETL and investigations. I would like to show you one last thing, which is to understand how an fully developed and mature investigation looks like. So I'll take you to a demo workspace and show you how a P2P investigation looks like. It is very informative and um, I'll take you to the operational reality and performance uh, investigation of it. And we can see how beautifully it can be designed and represented to the business. You will have the context and objectives in a text widget, um, mentioning what are my figures, what I'm planning to do, what should be the auto account, automatic accounting rate, and uh, what is what is my transformation business objective. You can add diagrams over here. And then you can uh, have your metrics. So these are a bit complex metrics which are defined like number of invoices and this chapter is what is the current performance is tell you how much is the sum of process invoices. Um, what is the average invoice payment time, number of invoice over time, sum of processing costs and what is the threshold? So we'll get all the details over here, whether it is reaching the threshold or not, or whether it is below the threshold average invoice payment type and you have other chapters which have very, very well documented and um, you will see the process model over here, which is a very enriched process model and it has all the swim lanes and how it looks and. You can then see what are how your actual process uh, in from the data system looks like in comparison to that process and you can also put process models side uh, process discovery diagram side by side by adding filter condition. What is the real processing of automatic invoice accounting that takes more than one day? And what is the real processing of automatic invoice accounting that take less than one day? So this way you can define two different process discovery and then compare them side by side to see how they look. Then there are other metrics which wherein you can select, uh, you can segregate based upon multiple uh, attributes. Let's say we have segregated based upon dates and operational entities. So you can select, deselect entities and see how your diagram looks with, with and without them. And you can maximize the bar or minimize the selection of time and see what difference it makes. Yeah. So this is how a matured investigation would look and it would be very helpful when you are actually going through a phase where you have already defined your assist process or you are planning to define your assist process and you have this at your disposal. And you also have a conclusion where you specify what you have found. And then you will have an option to generate insights. When you click on this button at the top of your investigation, click, click on insight. You can add your own insight or you can generate automated insights. Here I'll click on explore automated insight. We will find some insights, by, uh, by, uh, but we'll have to wait for a couple of uh, minutes over here. Let's see how much time it takes. Yeah, so we have this non conformant cases is 95.82% lower than mean where flag cancel or delete invoices. Yes, so you can get this very critical or very detailed information from this insight, which tells you how things are going. Metric non conformant cases 88.2% lower than mean where flag described, no manual resolving MECS. So, such sort of invoice will help you to understand how things are going on. And uh, it can help you to look at specific areas that needs improvement. And we can save the insight and we can refer them whenever required. Let's say I save this insight. This will come in my save list. I delete it for now as I don't need it. So this is how 
your actual investigation look, it will look once it is properly matured and then it would be much easier for you to continuously improve your process based upon the incoming data and how your e data from ETL will be transformed and loaded and what sort of modification you can perform with it and what sort of modification you can perform in your investigation to make it look more fulfilling and useful for the for your process transformation and improvement. I will be closing this session uh, from here onwards and uh, if you have any questions, please raise it with the individual with whom you are viewing this video and he will get back to me. Thank you very much.